uh oh, a Honda started. We're caught out in the open. What do we do? Just stand still, turn, run to a corner, hope the ghosts don't see us, or do we turn around and smudge that ghost like it's nothing because we're not afraid now as we run to the hiding spot? Now, you may not quite be at that level yet to be able to get away like that, but. I believe that with practice, you're going to be able to get there and following these five tips that I will be giving you will make sure that you're going to be better prepared for surviving a hunt after one has already started. So what do you do if you caught out of position? Well, we're going to go into the first tip. It's going to be one of the most important things that I always talk about, and that is knowing where your hiding spot is, formulating that plan. You know where your hiding spot is right off the bat. You're going to be able to just run straight to there and it's going to ease the pressure off of you. Now we're going to take a look at this Willow Street clip. So we see the ghost coming towards us. We're in the living room. We're going to smudge. We know our hiding spot is in the back corner of the garage. So we're going to run there afterwards. But what this is also going to lead into is tip number two. Tip number two is breaking line of sight. So let's take a look at this again and go through where we are breaking line of sight to ensure that the ghost will not find us. So now that we've smudged, we're going here. Now there's going to be a line of sight break by the door as well as going into the garage, going around the corner here, going around the car, then into the hiding spot. All of those are line of sight breaks. So if the ghost spots us at either one of those points, as soon as we turn the corner, it's not going to be able to see us anymore and we should be able to get there safely. Now, just to show you how powerful line of sight breaks are, take a look at this. So the, we break line of sight as soon as we enter the garage here. There's a line of sight break going around the kitchen into the laundry room and then turning into the garage. We don't even hide here. and The ghost does not come in. That shows you that as soon as you break line of sight, the ghost just starts to wander and then the hunt's over. And you can be protected even by not hiding. That is how important breaking line of sight is during hunts. That last clip will also go into the next tip, which is if you are trapped somewhere, a hunt has started and you can't get to your hiding spot, close doors and get behind objects. I don't know how true this is. I don't know the facts, but it appears as though when you close doors, ghosts are going to be less likely to roam in there compared to when a door is open. The first clip here we're going to look at is Tanglewood. Now, what you saw was we ran into that back master bathroom, which I haven't seen the ghost roam there very much. We shut the door behind us and we just waited. We even got close. You could see our flashlight flicker for a second, but the ghost never came and attacked us. The downside right here was we didn't really have an object that we could go behind to sort of hide or shield ourselves from the ghost if it did decide to come in, but we were armed with a smudge stick in this case. This next clip, we were dealing with a Thay that early hunted us, and it caught me completely off guard. I was completely unprepared. I had no idea where the hiding spots were. So I took this tip, I closed the door, and I hid behind an object. But there was a reason why, and I will explain everything at the end. All right, let's see. Bro, what? Is this a demon? I think we're dead. So we ended up surviving this hunt and have been fine. Then the ghost never actually entered the room. But the whole reason why I hid behind that object leads me into tip number four, which is loop the ghost around an object to create distance while you run to your hiding spot. My whole plan, if the ghost did come in there, we would have been dead. It's it's a thay at max speed. We would have been dead. We would not have been able to outrun it. But if the ghost did come in, I was going to have it loop around that object so I could then take off and hopefully find a hiding spot upstairs somewhere, which I know that it's not a great place. But in Willow, if you go to the back left bedroom behind the desk, it's at least a decent hiding spot if you don't have anything else, which we did not have at the time. So that would have been a good place for me to run to. And that would have been my plan, hoping that the line of sight breaks would have caused the ghost to stop there. Hopefully we could have got away. I really didn't think we could if it actually entered there, but that was my whole thought process. Let me show you now some other examples of what looping the ghost will look like. And so this is going to be like if we're stuck somewhere. And we're like, oh God, where's the ghost coming from? I think it's blocking our path. We're not prepared for this. Okay, he's coming out of the room. So what we're doing, we're hiding behind this right now, hoping that the ghost does not see us. It's like I mentioned in the last video, hide behind objects. And you're like, all right, I know that if the ghost is going to come towards me, I'm going to try to lead it around. We're, we're getting lucky because this ghost is not coming towards us. So we're like, oh God, please don't find me. Please don't find me. Oh, it's actually an Obake. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was actually an Obake. I was not actually planning on that. 
I don't know why the ghost didn't come there. So that can also be go along with the last tip of hiding behind objects. We actually got to see a shapeshift too. I wasn't even planning this. I'm just trying to record stuff. All right. Uh, let's do another hunt with the same ghost. And so I can actually show you what looping around the uh, object actually is. All right. So we're playing on amateur. So I just want to show you how this can be done. All right. Now, the ghost is spawning. So there he is. Hey, ghosty, right here, right? So he's going to be coming for us. And now this is when we're going to run away. We're trying to lead him close to us and then get around and use that to get away. We're running here to the hiding spot. And that's how you get away. And now the hunt's over. With the shorter hunt period, you don't have to worry about it as much. With the shorter hunt period, you don't have to worry about it as much because the hunt will end sooner and you'll be more easily able to get away. That's why one of the big things is don't panic. The next tip is going to be be thoughtful when using sprint. I know it can be very frustrating in this game. It feels like you're always out of breath. You want to get a place fast. There's a lot of walking involved. But using your sprint early could mean the difference between surviving a hunt and dying immediately. For instance, if you know that you are near hunting range, you wouldn't want to sprint to the ghost room to drop some more evidence items or anything in general. Only for the ghost to start hunting and then you're stuck. Same thing in the middle of a hunt. Don't just want to sprint if you're not sure where you're going or what you want to do with it. That's very important, especially if you're trapped out in the open. Be thoughtful with your sprint. Just like when looping around the items, you'll see that we're not just using our sprint all willy-nilly. We're actually having a reason to use it because we're trying to lure it and then get around and get away. And I'll show some more examples of that. So what we're doing here in Edgefield is we're luring the ghost to the one side of the couch while we go to the other and then sprint away there at the end. Use the line of sight breaks to get to the lockers and then we're safe. Same thing here in Ridgeview around this dinner table. We're not using our sprint as the ghost is coming towards us. We're luring it around the table and then sprinting at the end because it's going to take the ghost longer to go around or to turn around and now we're safe. And then looking at this one, we're not going to use our full three second sprint on this. We're doing it in little bursts. We're going around. As they're getting closer, we're then speeding up again. Some we may run out, but look, we can repeatedly loop the ghost around the table, try to run away, and then we're safe because the hunt ends. Here's a special bonus tip. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but the best way to survive after a hunt has started is just using a smudge stick. That's it. It's as simple as that. When should you carry a smudge stick and a lighter? Typically, I always like to have one in my inventory if I know that I am around 50% sanity, but depending on other ghosts, it may be higher and I want to stay safe by carrying that earlier because some ghosts do hunt earlier on sanities. So the longer you're in a map, I definitely recommend carrying a lighter and a smudge stick. Now let's look back around shutting doors and hiding behind objects. And I used Tanglewood as an example. This was actually not an example that I recorded specifically for this video. I was actually doing a yokai test. What is a yokai test, you might ask? Well, check out this video right here, and it'll tell you everything that you need to know about the yokai. See you there.